Hi, this next project is another uh, speech synthesizer project. Uh, you've probably seen uh, some of my other speech synthesizer videos. Primarily using this SPO 256-A-AL2 um, chip. Um, this was a chip popularized by Radio Shack back in the day. I actually found um, an original one here on eBay. Um, hard to get these days um, with the data sheet and all. Uh, but I've already talked a lot about this speech synthesizer chip in other projects. So in this project I'm going to add a text-to-speech feature uh, so that we don't have to program it in phonemes, we can program it in normal ASCII text. Uh, to do that we're going to use this CTS-256A-AL2 uh, chip, another uh, Radio Shack uh, chip. Um, also got this one off eBay. Um, has the original data sheet and such. It's misprinted on the front, CT5256A-AL2. It's actually CTS256A-AL2. Uh, um, so let's take a look um, at the data sheet. So here is the data sheet. Um, you can see it's a 40-pin IC. It's actually an early microcontroller, I believe, in that it has uh, some RAM and some ROM and stuff built into the chip. Um, it's been programmed with this text-to-speech algorithm. Uh, so you kind of see this pinout here is kind of the microprocessor, microcontroller pinout. It's got these A's and B's and C's, D's, ports. Um, so really help you know how to wire the IC up. But going into here, um, there are some schematics. And uh, we can see there's lots of parts to this. There's like a way to do it simply and a way to do it complicated. You can you can do it in as little as two chips or you can go with this multi-chip, multi-feature uh, solution. So starting over here, here's the text-to-speech uh, chip, the big 40-pin one. Here's the SPO256A-AL2. Uh, now this uh, chip can address several different additional peripherals. Uh, so what it's going to do is it's going to use some address decoding logic, just like we've used on all of our other microprocessor projects. There's this 74 um, LS138, which is a 3 to 8 decoder. It'll break out a bunch of uh, chip select lines. Uh, so one of the chip selects goes to the speech synthesizer chip. Um, we'll see the speech synthesizer chip. It has a uh, data buffer here, which buffers the, uh, the data lines to it. Um, and then it also has this latch pin. So what this thing will do is it'll put the appropriate data out here and then it will generate a latch signal and it will latch into the speech synthesizer and it will say that phoneme. Over here we have audio amplifying logic. Uh, the same thing as the SPO256 data sheet. There's an LM386 op amp, some filtering stuff, um, you know, just the op amp circuitry and, and a speaker. So let, let's take a quick look over here on this side. So we've got some data input. Um, there is a RS-232 driver, so we can accept serial data input. Um, also some feedback going out to tell when the buffer's full. Another RS-232 driver. Uh, there's a data out pin. I don't think this thing ever says anything interesting on data out other than uh, X on and X off flow control. Uh, there's some option select uh, via dip switch and the pull up resistors or pull down resistors. There's a reset switch. Um, there's a capacitor here and a resistor that do a little uh, time delay on start to automatically reset the chip. Uh, the chip's got a crystal. Um, the speech synthesizer has a separate crystal. Um, down here there's some options. There's a parallel port option. Um, an input buffer option and a UART parameters option. Uh, the parallel port option I decided not to implement. Um, just ran out of space on my PC board. This would allow you to send parallel data to the chip instead of uh, serial data. Um, expanded input buffer, that's some static RAM uh, that you can add. Uh, the input buffer on the chip is pretty small and you can easily overflow it saying even simple phrases. Uh, so expanded input buffer, that seems really, really useful. And then finally, UART parameters. That allows you to set some, uh, some parameters with the UART. Let's see if there's a list of what we could set. Yeah, you can set the number of bits per character, the parity, the even odd. 
So if you don't implement the uh, UART configuration uh, dip switches, then, then you end up with some kind of funky parameters in this. Seven data bits, uh, two stop bits, no parity. Um, I'm used to doing uh, eight data bits, one stop bit, uh, no parity. So it um, seemed like it'd be useful to implement the, uh, the serial uh, parameters. Looking through the rest of the data sheet here, um, let's see, we talked about the internal, external RAM. Um, now there is an external EEPROM uh, feature that you could add. Um, that They didn't actually put that in the data sheet, but it wires up just like the static RAM. And what that does is it allows you to specify uh, custom rules in your EEPROM so that, uh, you know, if you tell it to say a word that it, it the text-to-speech algorithm doesn't pronounce correctly, you can override that with um, custom phonemes and get it pronounced correctly. So I added that feature in mine. Um, let's see, switch with your parameters. You know, it talks a little bit about the rules that are built in. Um, I, I believe from what I've researched, I think this is the Naval Research Lab, um, uh, text-to-speech algorithm from the 70s. Uh, haven't really been able to verify it. Don't kind of have a, uh, a download of the program that's in this thing to make sure, but uh, it looks like it is based on these, these string matching rules. So it, it you know, if you have, um, let's see. So these things, anything other than a letter uh, followed by an E, uh, followed by an O or a U, it'll use the IY uh, phoneme. So it's basically kind of a regular expression type language. Um, and that's about all there is to this. Uh, there's a, uh, an addendum that came in it. Let's see what that says. Special functions, yeah, it's talking about the serial port configuration and the UART again. Oh, following changes. So what are the changes? 13 and 14. I looks like someone hand wrote a 13, oh, the ones on the 13 and 14 there. So uh, maybe that's it is um, just those two numbers. Uh, but they felt a need to uh, make an addendum for that. There's some other, other uh, data sheets you can get on the internet that you can download. Um, at least one of them has a mistake in the uh, UART configuration listed backwards. Um, that was confusing. Um, so let's take a look at the schematic that I came up with. Okay, so here is my schematic that I input into uh, Eagle. It's almost identical um, to the Radio Shack schematic. Uh, here you can see the, uh, the text-to-speech chip right here. Uh, over here is the speech synthesizer chip. In the middle we have uh, the buffer for the speech synthesizer as well as the address decoder. Um, down here we have uh, the RAM chip. Uh, we have the um, optional ROM chip. Uh, both of those go to chip selects that are up here on the uh, address decoder. Um, there's the UART parameters. Um, so all of that is just right out of the data sheet. Uh, let's see anything special about this. Uh, you'll notice I added um, an LED hooked up to the speech synthesizer so it'll turn red when it's talking. I did that in my uh, PC uh, speech synthesizer board. And I think um, the only significant change is I got rid of the um, RS-232 drivers uh, that they had in the Radio Shack data sheet and replace them with a uh, MAX202 uh, driver that has both the input and the output driver as well as a 9-pin header, um, a standard serial port header. Um, added a jack over here for the uh, audio output for the power in, also added a jack for that. Um, other than that, yeah, I mean this is really just a basic translation of the Radio Shack data sheet. I will put this schematic up on my uh, website for anyone who uh, wants to build one of these. So let's take a look at the board. So here is the uh, board that I designed uh, using Eagle. Uh, you can see we have the text-to-speech chip, um, we have the speech synthesizer chip, the uh, buffer for the speech synthesizer, the address decoder, 
two uh, sockets here, uh, one for the, uh, the RAM and one for the EEPROM. So over here, this is the hex inverter um, that it used for various things, as well as the buffer for the uh, serial input parameters. Uh, we can see two dip switches. This is the options for the chip. These are the UART settings, um, reset button. There is a uh, crystal for the microcontroller for the text-to-speech. Uh, there's a crystal for the speed synthesizer. Um, over here is the MAX202, RS-232 driver, as well as the 9-pin serial connector, uh, the LM386 op-amp, audio output jack, volume control, power in on that side. Uh, so let's give it a shot. So I will plug in my speaker. There, can you see the speaker? And turn it on. Um, if everything works, it should say OK when you turn it on. OK. There we go. OK. Uh, let me move the speaker closer so you can hear it better. Um, push the reset button. OK. OK. Now I do actually have a little uh, USB ammeter hooked to this. We can check its uh, power usage. Taking 140 milliamps, if I reset it. Let's wait a second. Okay. Pulls like an extra 10 milliamps when it's actually talking. So let's take this over to the computer. Um, I will hook up a USB uh, to serial adapter, this one right here, and we will listen to how it sounds hooked up to the computer. Okay, so I've got this hooked up to the computer. Um, USB to serial is hooked up. Let's turn it on. Okay. Said okay as usual. Uh, over here I have a terminal program. Uh, I've set the terminal program to 9600 baud. Set it to half duplex so you can see the keys as I type them. The only thing that actually comes out of the transmit line on the chip are X on and X off characters. So you'll see some of those there. So if we type test, there's the word test. I can Scott was. Let me try that again. So let's say Scott was here. Um, let's try a long string and see if we can overflow the buffer. So I have long string there. Copy it. So this is a test and then it blew up. Um, let's try it again. Kind of doing the same. You can actually uh, blow up the output buffer which is um, even worse. So let's try adding the, uh, the external RAM chip and see if we can use the bigger buffer and if it'll work better. Here's my external uh, static RAM. Um, you can see I accidentally bought the narrow version of the chip um, instead of the wide version. Uh, so I had to make this adapter board so the narrow one uh, will be adapted to the wide pinout. Um, moral of the story, buy the right chip. So let's plug this in. Uh, we have to flip a dip switch. Power up. Okay. And now can we say our long string? This is a test to see if we can overflow the buffer. Okay, so that worked. Let's try something even longer. So here is the uh, text of the song Daisy Bell. Let's see if we can make it say um, first few paragraphs of that. Oh, I had to hit carriage return to get the last word. 
Um, so I think it did pretty good. The, the external buffer um, worked pretty well. Let's see if we can actually overflow it by pasting the thing multiple times. Uh, let's paste it. Paste it again. There. It catastrophically blew it up that time. So overflow is uh, certainly a concern, even with the bigger buffer. Uh, one thing you can do to mitigate that, you can set the baud rate. So let's set the baud rate to 110 baud. Okay. Let's clear this uh, port 110. See if it's working. Test. Working. Now I can probably paste this. Many times as I want. And it's never going to overflow just because it's sending characters um, so slowly uh, that it, it cannot overflow the buffer. Well, I hope you enjoyed the demo. I think this uh, little text-to-speech board worked pretty well. Um, I'm going to put this design up on the website for anyone who wants to try to reproduce it, since it is a fairly accurate uh, reconstruction of the original uh, data sheet and uh, schematic. Um, hope you enjoy. Thank you. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.